Hi guys, Justin here. I just wanted to do a video kind of continuing on what Richie had said um, in a separate video about creatine. Um, you can watch Richie's video if you like, um, but I'm going to kind of um, cover a different aspect of creatine, so it's not really a continuation of his video, but it's kind of adding on to it. Um, and the video is dealing primarily with creatine, and I have I had some my own personal experiences using creatine because I used it for a while, um, and, and not recently, not within the last year or so. Um, but it, I've also um, it's come up several times uh, in my education uh, through taking anatomy and physiology, as well as um, I took a dietetics class specifically aimed at sports nutrition, and that obviously um, covered some ergogenic aids that are, are generally used in sports including creatine and um, so I just wanted to take uh, this video it, uh, hopefully it doesn't take too long but I wanted to try to break down a little bit about what creatine was and um, I'm going to do that now if you aren't interested in the scientific aspect of creatine then you can skip uh, forward in the video to this moment And um, so to start with the scientific aspect of creatine, uh, you kind of have to look at some of the aspects of uh, the skeletal muscles and what is involved in creating energy uh, from your muscles because that is where we get creatine from. And um, first, um, to break down the, the muscle and the muscle cells or cells that are located in the skeletal muscles, uh, you, you kind of have to know uh, what a mitochondria is. Uh, the mitochondria is what produces energy. It's kind of like the powerhouse um, energy production of uh, a muscle cell. And hopefully I, I say all this correctly. Sometimes I make videos and I go back and, and I listen to what I said and I think that that wasn't right and I'll end up deleting them. This one I probably won't do because it's a lot of information. Um, but as far as the mitochondria does, the biggest thing that it does is it creates it produces uh, what's called ATP and ATP is an abbreviation for adenosine triphosphate um, there's also some other aspects um, adenosine can exist as a single cell adenosine monophosphate diphosphate triphosphate and there's some uh, areas I'm going to gloss over hugely in this just to cut down on time um, but the big one that we're worried about is the triphosphate and um, what ha that, I mean, that's a big thing in creatine production because uh, while our muscles are at rest, um, we kind of produce a lot more ATP than is necessary. So the ATP, um, and, and it, it will convert into other forms, and that's its primary function. It converts energy into different forms. Um, so, and one of those forms is creatine. Creatine is a naturally occurring molecule found in our, our muscles. Some sources will call it an acid or a molecule, um, but it, it uh, is assembled from amino acids. Now, amino acids also are what makes up protein. Uh, you could say that they are a, uh, they're essentially the same thing. To say protein or to say amino acids is a very, is, is, they're, all, they're synonymous with each other. Well amino acids are also what makes up creatine. And creatine, uh, the form that we are concerned about is creatine phosphate. And what happens is that when the conversion of ATP into creatine happens is that we create something called creatine phosphate and that is the source that is used in um, the use of our skeletal muscles. And um, this happens through fatty acids that are in our bloodstream. Uh, fatty acids are broken down in the mitochondria from our bloodstream and it converts glucose into glycogen, which is another um, energy source that we use. And it um, can produce ADP, I think, uh, the diphosphate, into um, creatine. Now, uh, ADP and creatine phosphate uh, can both work together to produce muscular 
contractions. Um, the amount of ATP that is used in a muscular contraction is enormous. is is a very uh, is like I think it's two thousand five hundred um, molecules per second that are or per contraction that are, are being used. Uh, maybe it's per second. I can't recall. Um, but it, it's it's enormous. The, no, the number the amount of energy is incredible. So it that's kind of the reason that it converts into some of these other energy forms. And one of them is creatine. When you add the ATP and the creatine together, and they're both working to contract the muscle and cause a contraction, then it allows us to produce a lot more energy. So, um, say I only had ATP, I had no creatine reserves whatsoever, my body for whatever reason wasn't making them, then I may only be able to push a certain amount of rep weight for maybe five reps if I'm on a bench press. Whereas, um, adding the creatine in by itself, it might add three, two or three reps beyond that. So that's kind of where we get into some of the athletes that supplement creatine. And the form that they generally supplement it is creatine monohydrate. Now the question here is, should vegans use creatine? What, where does creatine come from? Now I've just explained that creatine is formed from amino acids. And as most people, most educated people are aware, you can get amino acids both from plant sources and from animal sources. Now there is some uh, argument, I guess, some question from among some individuals. I haven't really heard an argument within dietetics. Um, my dietetics class is generally accepted. Vegans or vegetarians can get as much protein as they need or many times more than what is necessary. But when you go to like bodybuilding.com or some of the other forums where they talk about amino acids and, and proteins, uh, there will be some argument as to you know the form that they come in or the whether it's a complete um, form. And I've always been amused because some some places say it'll say it contains all eight essential amino acids. Well, there's actually nine, so I'm not I'm not sure what what that's supposed to mean when they say all eight. Um, but since creatine is made from amino acids, then it is possible and does occur that um, manufacturers will produce vegan or vegetarian forms of creatine. Now, I don't use creatine, so I can't tell you um, any of those, those but um, you can go to veganessentials.com um, and they carry a lot, a lot of um, weightlifting supplements that are, are suitable for vegans. But, um, and then some are manufactured from animal products of some form. I've heard uh, people mention sheep's wool, not sure about that. Um, some people have mentioned the sinew of animal bone. I don't think that occurs anymore, but I think it did at one time. Um, and that is just some of the places that um, creatine comes from. Now, the pro, there are some pros and cons to consider when using creatine. Some of the pros are that it does, it works. I mean, it, uh, athletes have been using it for decades now, and adding additional creatine into your system in terms of getting, adding that to what your body is already manufacturing uh, has benefits in regards to pushing extra additional weight in regards to um, both anaerobic and um, aerobic exercise, so muscular um, endurance and muscular um, uh, short-term burst of energy, I guess you'd say, weightlifting, or in other words, and so like marathon running and like powerlifting, two opposite types of things. Um, it, it has benefits in both. Um, some of the cons and the downsides of creatine is that uh, many people who use it will have problems with digestion. They'll complain of cramps or stomach aches. And um, a quote from the Mayo, Mayo Clinic about creatine use is that it produced asthmatic uh, symptoms in some individuals that had um, an allergy to uh, synthetic forms of creatine. So meaning they could use definitely what was in their own bodies, but when it came to using creatine forms that were, that had been manufactured uh, from outside of that, that it produced asthmatic symptoms in the bodies. 
Um, and then the last thing I wanted to mention was my own personal um, experience with creatine. I used creatine off and on for about a year, and it's, it's been a few years ago. Um, and I, I had done been weightlifting at that time. I actually took about nine months off from weightlifting. And about the time that I started this channel was when I had kind of started to get back into it. Um, but when I was using creatine before, I, I, you would cycle it, or that's what, how I understood it, anyways, that people would go on a cycle. So I would try it for a certain amount of time, and one time it, it worked. Um, it, it, I definitely saw an increase in strength. And then uh, I tried it a separate time using what's what creatine monohydrate. And the second time I, I didn't notice any difference at all. Um, so, you know, I, I can't really speak for, you know, how well it works for every individual. But uh, those were kind of my um, experiences in using creatine. So for what it's worth, hopefully uh, this video has been kind of educational. Um, I know there's a lot of science-y type things, but you know, hopefully, um, you know, if you were interested in that, it gave you some benefits. So, um, you know, if you like the video, then feel free to like and subscribe. If you don't care much for it, then go ahead and dislike and comment on your disapproval. If you have any other questions about creatine or other aspects of phys human physiology, can't guarantee that I'll know them because I'm not a scientist, but um, you can feel free to ask. I've done a lot of studying about muscular science and I've studied um, exercise science and dietetics, so uh, feel free to ask whatever questions that if you'd like to see anything in future videos in the comment section below.